I bought a bunch of coins. The price went through the roof, and uh, I'm happy with my investment. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Ted Carr. I've been not posting as much on YouTube as I normally do because I've just been so caught up and so focused on cryptocurrencies over the past month. It's been the biggest part of my life, the biggest change that's ever happened to me, I suppose, is um, getting into cryptocurrencies and just watching the numbers go up and up and up. So I've made good money with cryptos and lots of my friends have made way more money and thousands and thousands of people online making YouTube videos with cryptocurrencies, talking about cryptocurrencies, have also made many, many thousands of dollars, even millions. And this is a really interesting time to be alive. It's a really interesting time in the financial market. It's a really interesting time with technologies coming out. We don't know what's around the corner. We don't know what's coming, but the future is looking good. The future is looking good if you're in cryptocurrencies. In the fiat currency game, I'm not sure what's going to happen there either, but it's not looking too good in the future for fiat currencies. Cryptocurrencies are going to take over, I think, especially online where they're designed to be used. Like the internet doesn't have its own currency yet, it hasn't had its own currency yet until now. Cryptocurrencies are the internet's currency. So if you want to get in now while the tide is low, you want to buy some cryptocurrencies, now might be a great time. But I gotta say that this is not financial advice. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience here, saying that I bought a bunch of coins, price went through the roof, and uh, I'm happy with my investment. I'm happy with my investment. Family members of mine are getting in, friends of mine are getting in, and they're all seeing major, major dollars going up uh, in their portfolios. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you 14 things that you've got to know about cryptocurrencies, or at least be reminded of if you already know them. So the first thing you got to know is that most people when they try and get into cryptocurrencies initially, they use an app like Coinbase or something. But Coinbase is like the slowest way to get into cryptocurrencies. It's the slowest way. You're going to be waiting weeks and weeks and weeks just to get verified, just to put in a couple hundred dollars here and there. So Coinbase might look attractive, it might be trending on the app store or whatever, it might be really easy way to get in but it's not the best way by any means the best way the, sorry the fastest way to get in is to go to your local bitcoin dealer pretty much every city every every big city has a local bitcoin dealer and you can just go there and pay cash my friend yesterday went and put ten thousand dollars in cash and they took five percent the local bitcoin dealer in your area is the fastest way to get in but they also charge a really high rate like my buddy getting in for only five percent that's that's not bad most Local Bitcoin dealers will charge about 10%. So if you give them $10,000, you're actually only getting $9,000 of Bitcoin back if you buy Bitcoin with them. So they take a high fee, 10%. Whereas uh, with Coinbase, it's it's a much lower percent, but uh, it's still pretty high for for an exchange. I think Coinbase, like yesterday, I bought just like just to use up some money. I had um, about like 150 bucks worth of Bitcoin, and they charged me like five bucks. So. It's still kind of high, like whatever, three and a half percent or whatever. But uh, yeah, so that's the first thing. Don't use Coinbase to get in if you want to get in fast. If you want to get in fast, go to your local Bitcoin dealer and just pay the 10% fee or whatever and uh, get in the game now while the prices are still low. I'm looking down by the way because these are my notes. The next thing you want to keep in mind is that once you have your coins, once you have your Bitcoin for example, you want to keep it offline you want to keep it on a nano ledger or a trezor uh, you can see links below to purchase those uh, cold storage is the safest way to keep your coins i don't recommend keeping your coins on exchanges because exchanges can get hacked like your account might not get hacked but the exchange itself might get hacked and if the exchange get hacked gets hacked then they could wipe your account clean and even if they don't target your account when they attack the site they tax some other accounts, like a whole bunch of other accounts, like they did with Bittrex.com, or Bitfinex, I should say. What Bitfinex did, because like thousands of users got their accounts cleared, Bitfinex decided to take like 30% from everyone's account and divide it up among everyone so that those people were, you know, reimbursed. So a lot of people got angry about that. But anyways, keep your account, keep your money off the exchanges and keep it on cold storage. The third thing I gotta say is, if you are going to keep your money on an account, if you are going to keep your coins on an exchange, 
like Bitfinex or Bittrex or Binance or Kraken or Coinbase, whatever, use 2FA, two-factor authentication. Use Google Authenticator or there are other authentication apps, but Google Authenticator is probably the easiest one to use. Um, but use two-factor authentication. That way people can't just get your username and password. They also need to have your phone as well. That's really important. Set up 2FA with every account that you have on an exchange. Uh, the fourth thing that you've got to be aware of is that let's say you put in a thousand bucks and for some reason it goes up to twenty thousand dollars. You made like twenty times return on your investment. You don't have that twenty thousand dollars. That twenty thousand dollars isn't yours until you withdraw it. So don't go walking around, don't go spending money like you have twenty thousand dollars sitting there because you don't. It's not your money until you withdraw it, until you are holding it. Until you're holding that money, it's just imaginary money. It's just some pixels on a screen. That $20,000 that you now have, you don't have it until you withdraw it. Same goes, it's like if you put in like 100 grand and it goes up to like $2 million, you're not a millionaire. Until you withdraw it, until you have that fiat currency, you're not a millionaire. Now, I don't know what the future of fiat currencies are. Maybe in the future they're gonna be absolutely worthless. Maybe all the money is gonna be online. Uh, in fact, I highly see it that way. I mean, it's highly likely that that is going to happen. Everything is going online now. You can pay, you can buy things with your phone now. You can buy things with your Apple Watch. Soon you're gonna be able to buy things just with Face ID. You just go to the store and put your face in the screen and it takes the money from your digital account. So, fiat currencies might not have any value whatsoever in the future. But still, even then, it's like that money on the cloud is not yours until you at least do something with it, at least, at least spend it or buy something with it or whatever, at least you have in, in, in it have it in another form other than just on an exchange. At least get it on a cold storage. But the price volatility right now is so drastic with cryptocurrencies. Like one day Bitcoin could be worth 20,000 and then the next day it could be worth 15,000, next day it's like 100,000, next day it's 80,000. Like the price is so volatile with Bitcoin right now. Whereas with fiat currencies, it's much more stable. So as of this video, that money is not yours until you withdraw it and have the cash. But in the future, who knows? It might be the opposite. It's like that cash is kind of useless until you put it into cryptocurrencies. Next up is to have a plan for each coin. So if you buy, let's say, some Bitcoin at currently I think the price is like 17,000 US, you buy some Bitcoin, have a plan. What do you want to do with that? Do you want to sit on that Bitcoin until it hits 30,000? Until you pretty much double it? Or do you want to sit on that Bitcoin until it reaches 100 grand? Or do you simply want to buy a Bitcoin for 17,000, wait till it goes to 20,000, and then cash out and walk away with three grand. Bonus three grand. Have a plan for each coin. Also have a plan if it goes down. Like you buy Bitcoin for 17,000, are you gonna sell out if it, if it goes to 15,000? If it drops down, you're gonna just lose two grand? Have a plan for each coin. That way you're not freaking out. That way you go into it full, well, knowing what you're gonna do. So if the price goes up, it goes down, you're not stressing because you've already made up your mind ahead of time. You're not reacting to the prices, you've already set up a plan. Have a plan for each coin, whether it's Litecoin or Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever, have a plan. Next up is, don't check prices all day long unless you're day trading. If you're not day trading, it's not in your best interest to check the prices every single day, multiple times a day. You might check the prices once a day, but don't check the prices multiple times a day. And definitely don't check the price first thing in the morning when you, when you wake up. You don't want to put your mind in reaction mode. You don't want to be reacting to prices. You don't want to tie emotions to it either. You don't want to think, oh man, my thing is down and I put so much money in yesterday, I just lost $3,000. Don't be a reactor, man. Be a creator. Think creatively. Think of solutions all the time. Have plans and uh, be creating, not a reactor. So unless you're day trading, don't check the price multiple times a day. Just check it maybe once, not even that. Maybe check it even a few times a week just to see how it's doing. If your plan is long-term holding, if you want to hold for six months to a year, then don't check it for a few months. Live your life. There's more to life than just making money, for sure. Next up is if you are going to check the prices, use Blockfolio. Blockfolio is an amazing app. It shows you your whole portfolio. You can Every time you make a trade, every time you buy something or sell something, you just add in, you put the plus button and you add in uh, an action. You say, okay, I just bought some Litecoin for, you know, 0.25 Bitcoin or whatever. Bought a whole bunch of Litecoin for 0.25 Bitcoin. 
you just put in the trade price, the amount, blah, 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 and it adds it up and it shows you your whole portfolio. So that way you can see how much you've really invested in cryptocurrency on a whole. Next up is ICOs, initial coin offerings. They are very attractive for some people. People think like, oh, this coin hasn't even gone on the market yet. It's only, you know, I can buy coins right now for like three cents. And once it hits the market, it's probably going to go up to like at least, you know, 10 cents. Uh, maybe even higher But you don't know and most ICOs are a scam. They don't come onto the market with the intention of being a scam But they're just they're just they're really good at marketing themselves, but they're all talk There's they usually don't have a great team behind them. They usually have no track record They usually are just full of empty promises. So in my opinion, I say avoid ICOs Just wait till things are on the market. All right Avoid ICOs, it's not worth the risk. And it's just it's just fueling some potential scam. Uh, number nine here. The safest bet, as far as which coins to go for, if you want to play it safe, typically is the top 10. You go for the top 10 coins. If, if you put any money in the top 10 coins, even the top 20 coins, over the past few months, you've made a lot of money. You've made a lot of money. If you, if you put in, if you put in you know, a thousand bucks into every coin in the top 20, like three months ago, you probably would have made 20 grand. Probably would have made 20 grand just in the past three months. So the top 20 coins, you know, they're proven. The top 10 for sure. And uh, of course, the top three, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. Um, those ones are um, just tried and true, and you're pretty safe with those. So if you're unsure of which coins to get into, go for the top 10. And... Uh, you probably you'll probably be safe next up just to educate yourself educate yourself on every single coin you're putting money into like don't just put coins don't just buy things buy coins put money into coins that you don't that you know nothing about do a lot of research at least watch five or six YouTube videos on any coin that you want to invest in first and look at both sides of the stories. It's it's good to look at videos where, where people say like why I'm not buying Ethereum or why I'm not buying Litecoin or why I'm, I'm not buying Bitcoin or why I'm not buying Ripple. Instead of just watching videos about like why this coin is so amazing, watch videos also they're saying why this coin could be potentially dangerous. Because there's a whole another side to the story that you got to realize. Like with salt for example, salt is a, uh, is a coin and people are saying like how it's going to be so amazing because it's going to allow people to, to take loans out with their bitcoins and, and, and have actual fiat currency based on you know how much bitcoin they're putting in and it's gonna be great and everyone's gonna do that and they haven't even launched yet and once they launch it's gonna blow up so buy a bunch of salt now but then you gotta look at the other side of the story look at a video called like why I'm not buying any salt and that's because the restrictions around loans is massive it's like a whole legal issue thing going on there with having company that, that hands out loans with cryptocurrencies nonetheless. And the team behind it, it's like they don't really have that much of a pro proven track record and they haven't even launched yet so you don't even know if it's gonna work. And if it doesn't work, if they get shut down because the whole thing like is just illegal, then you've just lost all your money. So be aware of, of things like that. Look at both sides of the story, why you should buy this coin and why you shouldn't, and then make up your mind based on your own research. Next up is, uh, don't worry about small exchange fees. If I'm on an exchange platform, like let's say uh, Bitfinex or Bittrex or Binance or Kraken or whatever, and you go to make a trade and they charge you like four or five dollars, you might think, oh, that's crap. Like it's cost me four dollars just to make that trade. Yeah, well, who cares? Even if you make a hundred trades and it's five bucks each, that's five hundred bucks. If you make a hundred trades over the course of maybe a couple months, that 500 bucks, it doesn't matter because you've probably made five or six grand or more. So it's just part of the it's just part of the game right now. In the future, with atomic swaps, you're gonna be able to avoid those you know five six dollar fees every time you trade something, or even twenty dollar fees. I tried to remove some uh, Bitcoin from a certain exchange the other day, and it cost me twenty bucks just to withdraw it. In the future, that's not gonna happen. In the future, exchanges are not gonna be able to charge that much because there's gonna be atomic swaps happening, and um, we'll be able to go peer to peer and either have it free or just like super minimal cost on that so that'll be amazing but for now just accept the fact that these $20 fees here and there are part of the game it's part of the price it's part of what you're buying into uh, number 11 here is to or number 12 
Number 12 here. Skim off the top every now and then. Every now and then, take some money out, go buy some Christmas gifts, go buy some birthday gifts, go treat yourself to something nice, buy yourself a new camera, buy yourself some, uh, some nice clothes or whatever you want, but just spend the money somehow. Treat yourself to eat, treat yourself and a lover to vacation or, or some really nice fruit or a membership to a certain website or whatever it is. But just take some money out and do something with it. Actually go live your life. You're just staring at the numbers going up and up and up and up. You don't want that to be your whole life. Go out and live your life. Go out and use that money that you've made with cryptocurrencies and do something with it. Travel, explore, live your life. Put it into your business. Enhance your life. Go to a self-development seminar. Or Get an audiobook or something. Spend a little bit of money. Spend some of it. That's important to keep balance in your life. Number 13 is that it's still early days right now. The tide is still low. It's, there's still early pickings out there in the crypto sphere. Like the prices now are not going to reflect the prices at the end of 2018. The prices at the end of 2018. Everything could be doubled, everything could be tripled. Bitcoin right now is 17,000, 18,000. By the end of 2018, Bitcoin could be 60 grand. So if you're thinking it's too late now to get into Bitcoin at $20,000, well, if you buy Bitcoin out for 20 grand and it goes up to 60 grand, congrats, you just made 40 grand. But we don't know what the price is gonna do, but what we do know is that it's still early days and that the more people that buy in, the higher the price goes up. And every day, tens of thousands of people are getting into Bitcoin for the first time. Every day, tens of thousands of people are getting into Bitcoin for the first time. The market cap right now in all of cryptocurrency is like $6 billion. That's still really small. Like, I remember going, with, like, going for a walk with my friend a few months ago, maybe, yeah, a few months ago, earlier in t this year, and we we're talking about how the market's like pretty healthy if it's like over a billion dollars. One billion. And now it's six billion. At the end of 2018, even like halfway through the end of even halfway through 2018, the market cap is going to be like over 12 billion probably. Keep that in mind. It's still early days. It's still a lot of money that's going to get pumped into cryptocurrencies in the coming months. And if you get into some coins now, hold them for a few months, you're probably going to see an increase in that money. So it's still early days. Don't worry about the FOMO. Don't worry about the fear of missing out. Just get in now. If you want. If you want. The last thing, thing number 14 to realize is that and I can tell you this, but until you experience it, you're not gonna really feel what I'm talking about. Making money doesn't make you happy. It can allow you to experience some luxurious things in life, but it won't make you happy. It won't change your emotional state whatsoever. And the dictator of your life experience is your emotional state. What kind of emotion are you carrying through the day? What sort of emotions are you most familiar with on an ongoing basis? Because money doesn't change that. You can't buy happiness. You really can't. It doesn't matter how much money you make in cryptocurrency, it's not gonna make you any happier. So go out and find ways of making yourself happy. Maybe it's going to the gym. Maybe it's swimming. Maybe it's volunteering. Maybe it's just hanging out with animals. Maybe it's hanging out with certain friends. But just do what you know that makes you happy. For a lot of people, typically, that's some sort of creative expression, that's some sort of art. It's some sort of, um, activity that they're making progress in wherever you can see progress you're gonna find some motivation and whenever you're motivated you're gonna find some good emotions so don't rely on making money for your happiness you're never gonna find it there and same goes for your health no matter how much money you make that can make you any healthier health comes from health is a state of mind really it starts with a state of mind and once you adopt that state of mind of being healthy then things are gonna transpire in your favor to be even more healthy. Focus on the fruit when it comes to diet, focus on the early nights when it comes to getting to bed, focus on the positive, uplifting, motivational relationships when it comes to relationships, and focus on expressing yourself creatively on an ongoing daily basis if you wanna have the best moods. And always, always, always do what you wanna do. Don't take shit from anybody. Don't let other people boss you around and tell you what to do in your life. Unless you're looking for that, unless you want some guidance, unless you're asking for it. If you're not asking for help, if you're not asking someone for what to do, and they're telling you what to do, trying to boss you around, you don't need that in your life. Just screw them off. It's okay. You, everything you need to succeed is within you right now. And when it comes to watching videos on YouTube as well, this is very important. Only watch positive, uplifting, informational, motivational videos. Don't watch gossip or drama or just trending stuff. 
fill your mind with really good stuff that's helped, gonna keep you on track and help you to get to where you wanna go in life. And you'll be all good. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.